Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is special. Special because it addresses philosophy. Why we are interested in philosophy. What purpose philosophy serves to humanity. And why philosophy is useful how you can become a philosopher and how you can engage in philosophy and how to engage in philosophy in a healthy, stimulating and invigorating manner. Now, I want to mention first and foremost that some of you won't be as interested in philosophy as others. To some, philosophy is fascinating, interesting, stimulating, energizing. It gives you a sense of drive, it gives you a sense of energy, it gives you a kick, it gives you an insight, it gives you a rush, it gives you the ability to see things, have insights, and to experience meaning, and it gives you an urge to share and to explain and to explore your thoughts together with other people. Philosophy is the most useful to those who have taken the Myers Briggs personality test and gotten the result INTP, INFP, INFJ, or INTJ. Those are the people that will find in, uh, philosophy the most stimulating. Beyond that, not only will they find it stimulating, but they will find it reassuring. The answers an introverted and intuitive type finds in introverted intuition, in philosophy, are answers that give you a sense of serenity, peace, calm, self-trust and a sense of certainty and a sense of understanding. When you go into introvert intuition and when you engage in philosophical pursuits as an introvert intuitive, you'll find yourself calming down, relaxing and understanding. And the role of introvert intuition is different for you than it is for other people. How introvert intuition hits you is going to be different than it is for other people. The key reason we engage in introvert intuition and in philosophy is to gain existential intelligence and into existential awareness. Awareness of our surroundings, awareness of things that we cannot see or touch or hold in our physical reality, awareness of things that we cannot understand, such as what another person is thinking, what's going on inside another person's head, what the point of life is, why bad things happen, why we are unlucky, why the world works the way it does, why a system works the way it does. It is a system of gaining insight into and learning things about things that we normally wouldn't be able to understand. And it is a lot like taking something, flipping it and studying it from different angles. It is like peering into something like a crystal ball and into studying it from different angles and perspectives and viewpoints. It is asking yourself a variety of questions and thinking and simulating on and running experiments on, theoretically speaking, inside your own head, how the world works. So the introvert intuitive process doesn't require you to do anything at all. You can do it without, wherever you are, at any size, at time, at any moment. All you have to do is close off, detach and simulate. Introvert intuition is a rather easy process to engage with. Philosophy is always readily available to you. You can always question anything. You can always think about anything. You can always, there's always something to think about. Thinking is easy in that sense. And for the introvert intuitive, typically it's that we want to think to gain stability. When we understand the world is easier to manage, the world is less intense, the things that happen are less scary, the things that we observe, the people we meet are less difficult to deal with, the world becomes easier to manage the more you understand and the more you learn about the world as a philosopher type. So you will want to engage in introvert intuition and you'll want to use it as a tool to manage your high sensitive nature.
When I think about introvert intuition for other types, first I want to talk about how it is for other intuitives, for ENFPs, ENTPs, ENFJs, ENTJs. I want you to know that introvert intuitive, uh, introvert intuition is something that they will also find enriching. If you share with ENFPs, they will be fascinated by what you tell them. You'll find they'll find it interesting, they'll find it energizing, they will find it as a fuel and a source of energy, and it will inspire action and they, it will inspire events. But for the ENFP, the ENTP, and the ENFJ and the ENTJ, introvert intuition is a vulnerable function. It's a scary function, it's a difficult function. The answers an ENFP or ENTP finds will to them appear uncomfortable and scary. Thoughts about things they cannot see or cannot test and cannot ask questions about and investigate in the world around them are difficult to handle. Nuances and perspectives and viewpoints from introvert intuition that cannot be tested or investigated that have no basis in clues or in ideas and opportunities in your surroundings are difficult. So the ENFP and the ENFJ will want to test your ideas and your insights out. They will want to ask other people about it to see if other people see things the same way. They will want to make investigations and run experiments in reality to see if they can reproduce these ideas. They will want to find ways to explore and to confirm these assumptions. And here's the interesting thing. For the philosopher, there is little interest in testing out your theory or hypothesis. A philosopher likes formulating a theory about how the world works, but is less comfortable exploring this theory and wanting to test it out. Now, the difficulty here is you need to get out of your comfort zone at times. It's easy as a philosopher type to get lost in your inner tower and in your own thoughts and to keep on thinking and it's easy to get blocked in this process if you get too stuck and too attached to it. Don't get too attached to your ego and don't get too attached to the things that you are reasoning about. Go find an idea or find a theory but recognize loops. Recognize when your thoughts are going in circles. Recognize when you keep investigating the same old theory over and over, but never making any moves on it. Recognize when you are failing to explore and to investigate your own conclusions. Recognize when you find it difficult to share with other people your ideas and your thoughts. Get more comfortable sharing your philosophy with other people, even if it opens and invites other people to question you and to try it out for them, their own sake. Get more comfortable going on adventures, in a sense. Adventures to explore and dream. Adventures to sp seek answers that you're thinking about. Don't get too attached to your own head, in a sense, because uh, the problem is, well, the issue for an introvert intuitive is sometimes they will think their way out of adventures and out of action. A problem for INFJs and INTPs and INTJs and INFPs all alike is we are great for pretending not to need anything. We're great at saying we don't need adventure, we don't need to explore, we don't need to investigate. We're great at thinking of reasons to keep on thinking. We're great at rationalizing our own overthinking and to pretend like there is no such thing as overthinking. Introvert intuitives will readily say there is no such thing as overthinking, but yes, there is. For an introvert intuitive, a problem, a common problem to avoid when you want to avoid adventures is fake happiness, fake serenity. INFJs and INTPs will all go into this mode where they say I'm perfectly happy just where I am. The world around them can be aflame and they have nothing and everything is bad and they have no food and no money and no resources and nothing at all and they go everything is fine and they 
go into this fake zen where they go, oh, I'm present, I'm happy in the moment, I'm enjoying myself, but often it's a fake happiness, it's not real happiness, that's a problem with it. Uh, it's uh, happiness that comes from telling yourself, engaging in extroverted sensing. When engaging in extroverted sensing, introvert intuitives will readily say that they are happy in the moment and that they're comfortable in their surroundings and that things are good at just the way they are. But there is a deviousness here. First, it is difficult for an INFJ or INTP to remain present. They will put on this armor of presence, but holding it up will make them anxious. And they will only hold it up when offered an adventure. Suddenly, when someone comes and offers them an adventure, they go, no, I'm happy in the moment. But the rest of the time, they overthink, they detach, they are completely blind to their surroundings, they are not present at all. They're only present as a means to try to persuade other people that they don't need adventure, they don't need ideas, they don't need opportunities, they don't need <laughs> any chance to make their theories real. They will engage in this fake extroverted sensing only as a means to avoid being vulnerable. Only as a means to avoid having dreams. Only as a mean to avoid getting excited or to get passionate about a new idea. And this will keep them from getting fuel and inspiration to overcome blocks and mental blocks in their theories. Adventures and dreams and opportunities are the key fuel to an INFJ or an INTP that has gotten stuck. When stuck, they will keep on coming to the same answer over and over and they will keep on feeling like they missed something, that there is something they missed and they need to think more about it and they need to think more to figure it out. But they don't have the resources mentally to find the answer. They don't have the connections, the brain patterns, the things they need to make that answer happen. They need inspiration. And no matter how much they think about it, that answer won't come to them unless they go out into the world searching for that answer. Unless they let themselves get inspired by often taking a risk. Taking a risk such as jumping on a new opportunity, starting up a new project, speaking to new people, expressing your thoughts and philosophies and where you are right now and what you're thinking about right now and inviting and encouraging other people to question and to identify these blocks that you are having. So how is introvert intuition for an ESFP or an ESTP or an ESTJ or ESFJ? Well, first of all, it is something they engage in to avoid dealing with things they are afraid of. When an ESFP or an ISFP is running away from their past, that is when all of a sudden they become philosophers. When they are avoiding a bad issue, a trauma, a negative experience that they've had, then all of a sudden they're constantly thinking about who they are in the future and they're always engaging in projects of simulating on and questioning everything. Suddenly they go into this mode of a monk or a writer and they start, uh, start writing up ideas and scenarios and they start coming up with um, some conception of a future, some perspective that will keep them away from it. They will use perspectives as a kind of defense to avoid dealing with introverted sensing. ESFPs and ESTPs will find that it's annoying and that it's scary and that it's draining to engage in introverted intuition. 
they will be, find that the answers and these perspectives that they are holding up and hiding behind are difficult to hold up and take energy to hold up and that it closes them off. All of a sudden they're not taking in new ideas and new perspectives. All of a sudden they're kind of hiding where, behind this safe zone, this safe answer, this safe theory that will keep them from having to think back. So it's about noticing that how difficult it is for you to engage in this. And it's about noticing also how uncomfortable you feel holding this up. How it doesn't feel how it doesn't feel safe, how it doesn't feel like it holds and like it's stable. Finally, for the ISFJ, the ISTJ, the ISFP and the ISTP, introvert intuition is something accessed through the autopilot. An ISFJ or an ISTJ will <laughs> act and engage in introvert intuition when lazy. An ISFJ or an ISTJ will conjure up an idea of the future uh, out of a sense of laziness and of being tired and of not having the energy to deal with um, their history or with other things around them. They feel too tired to be true to themselves and too tired and too exhausted by their present state. So introvert intuition is like a, a kind of napping mode or a robot mode or a zombie mode. You engage in philosophy as an ISFJ, walking forward, going, oh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> thinking on autopilot, philosophizing on autopilot using answers as kind of a sleeping pill or sleeping tablet, telling yourself things, simple truths, true introvert intuition to put yourself to sleep. You use it kind of to fall asleep, to stop thinking, to stop having to care or stop uh, getting excited about something that you feel or worry is going to disappoint you. You feel too overwhelmed at work, perhaps, or you feel like there's too much going on, so you use philosophy to desynthesize you and to slow things down. So, notice how questions of an existential nature will kind of trap you in this autopilot consciousness. And notice how these kinds of questions are going to rather keep you from dealing with reality and with things around you that you enjoy and things that you like. Finally, when talking about what healthy introvert intuition looks like and what healthy philosophy looks like, well, look at it this way. Introvert intuition philosophy should shake you up and get you to take action. Healthy philosophy should give you a sense of comfort and inner trust to get you to take action towards the right thing or towards a new opportunity or towards a new ability. Introvert intuition should give you the ability to overcome past traumas and past issues. It should help you learn from past mistakes and to give you an answer on what your future might look like and what kind of future you can live to be happy. And introvert intuition should give you perspectives to help you become less angry and less hateful. Philosophy should help you heal. It should help you overcome issues. It should help you consider things that you previously didn't consider. An unhealthy introvert intuition will do the very opposite of this. Unhealthy introvert intuition will only make traumas worse, will only make you more angry, will only make you feel more unsafe, more scared, more melancholy, more depressed. Uh, so recognize that and also recognize the midpoint. Recognize when you keep thinking about something but never acting on it. Recognize when the thoughts that you're having 
are only pr there to protect you from something real that you need to deal with. Note this, when these thoughts are something you engage in purely to desensitize yourself and to not have to care and to not have to deal with something very real. And note this, when introvert intuition is scaring you and when it's uh, making you uncomfortable and what traumas and what issues it brings up in you and find ways to answer these traumas because often for an ENFP or an ENTP or an ENFJ or ENTJ introvert intuition will shake you up and it will show you what it is you need to solve in your life when confronted with an existential issue as an ENTP think about what actions you can take right now to your creativity, to your inspiration, to your amazing ability to solve problems and to spot patterns and to spot, scout out new opportunities. Find solutions to these existential issues in how you live your life and what you do with your life and how you engage and treat other people. I hope this video helped you understand more about introvert intuition and I hope that it can be a fresh perspective on how we can talk about the MTI without alienating different personality types and by including and relating it to real issues in society such as existential issues or diplomacy or uh, systems or architecture or all kinds of personality traits and pursuits that exist in the real world. This is the part of something new that I want to keep on doing. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.